It's often told that Aikido and Aikido weapons are inseparable. Uh, unfortunately, many styles, many schools that I've seen disconnect those two quite a bit. Uh, the weapons feel like a certain add-on where it's hard to understand why we do those weapons at all. Nevertheless, it's oftentimes spoken that there should, there's a direct connection between the sword and taijutsu, open-handed techniques, and that the sword movements can develop your taijutsu techniques. But as I said, not many schools, not, not many teachers, not, uh, not often actually it's pointed out clearly where the connections are. So in order to develop that, in order to help you support your journey through Aikido, connecting weapons to Aikido techniques, we're going to look at a few different points, some of them very simple, some of them more sophisticated, but very clear, very understandable of how Aikido weapon techniques directly translate and develop your Taijutsu. So now, probably the most often common thing you will hear about the connection between Aikido weapons and Taijutsu is the stance. So I'm gonna go through this quickly since most of you probably know that. The Aikido stance actually derives, it is oftentimes said that the Aikido stance derives from the sword. So meaning that when I'm with the sword, that's the sword stance, and if I put down the sword, if I stand in an Aikido stance, it's the exact same thing, meaning my back leg, the foot is on the side, the front foot is forward. There's that uh, distance between the legs, back arm back, front arm front, extended arms, nice straight posture, same thing as I would be holding a sword. So here you can see that connection and it is said and well said that when you get used to standing in a stance with a sword, that develops your general Aikido stance, which is very important, it's an important stance. Now, when you practice those sword movements, and when you, for example, when you turn and cut, turn and cut, so that movement actually translate, translates to, to Aikido movement as well. When you're used to cutting with a sword, cutting with a sword, the same movement on turning in Aikido, it's the same. So actually, when you develop some of the steps with the sword, you actually do develop your Aikido movement of the feet as well. Uh, that actually applies to uh, one more, or at least a few more techniques. So I was about to take the Jiro, but actually same applies to the Boken. So this can be done both solo, but uh, also for the partner. So when the partner attacks, when I go back, so notice how my feet works. So we're gonna do this slowly. So when he steps towards, I turn my foot first, I step back and I adjust the foot and then I cut. So now, third wise, why it's important is that if I would do that with, and I would first step and then turn the foot, now the position isn't correct. It's not strong, it would be hard to receive that strike. So here, even in the basics of the sword, if I do, let's say the second suburi, I step back uh, same thing. First of all, I turn my foot, I step back here. If I don't turn my foot, if I step back, not only is that it's terrible for the knee here, uh, that's uh, too much of a torsion, also it's not comfortable to bring it back. So when I train to the back movement with the sword or with the, with the Joe, I get used to turning that foot back and that really is important for Taijutsu as well. Since if I have a partner, as mentioned, there's that knee torsion, which is very bad. Aikido is already hard on the knees. You don't want to make it harder. So if my partner pushes me here, if I'm in a good stance, I can support his push. But then if he continues to push, if I step back here, there's no posture here. I'm not going to be able to support him and I'm not going to be able to do a technique. But if I turn that foot here, my posture, I still support even if you push is good here i can still support his push and then as i step here now here's the stance again there i support his push again and when i support his push i can actually let it through stepping back while turning the foot isn't a common movement in daily life and when you practice it with the sword you really get used to this so this is still quite basic uh, but important things now i'm going to explore a bit further so to continue on uh, let's look at the sword cut itself. So it is oftentimes said that some of the techniques even in Aikido are directly coming from the sword movements, which if we have enough time, I'll show a few examples of. 
But the sword movement, the cut itself, actually, it can be done in different ways. The way I do it is uh, somewhat connected to Ivama style, to Saito Sensei, but also some other uh, senses and teachers. But I'll just ex explain how it really helps me to develop that, that certain type of cut. So here, when I cut, I cut, you can cut first sword, then body, but that doesn't really engage your hips. Hips, center, core are very important in Aikido. So if you train while putting the foot first, going on the ground first, and then engaging the hips, here the hips rotate in, they turn in, rotation, turning in, and cut here. So that movement of the hips, not only does it support and make the cut much stronger, but also with each cut there, here, you actually develop hip movement. So slowly, here, here, that rotation without over-rotating, rotation in and extension out. Here, you develop that movement, which is very strong, very powerful, and very common in Aikido, in Taijutsu. So with the partner, if I step in to do an Ikkyo, so here, getting used to rotating, this is, well, let's say, even if I do it on the other side. Here, that rotation, if I do an Ikkyo on this position, here, if I do just with the arms, it's not going to be as powerful. If I connect it with the hips, here, it becomes much stronger. So, but that movement, notice it's the same. So here, turn my hips, cut, turn my hips, cut, right here. So that cut, here, rotation of the hips, extension with the arms, here. Notice that it's the exact same if I do an Ikkyo from this position, here. Exact same movement. So actually that movement of the hips, I develop it. I become much better at it while practicing and using the sword. So actually there is a, at least a few more movements which are very powerful and important for Aikido, but uh, since we're running out of uh, time for this single video, so it wouldn't be too long, we are going to stop here. We will probably continue this in another video uh, just in general, but if you are interested in this topic, let us know in the comments to support the continuation of this series. And we'll do our best to make another episode. All in all, I hope you benefited from some of the details here and you got a better understanding of how the weapons and Taijutsu connect. As I mentioned, there's still more to come but we will explore it in another video right now. We're going to stop here. And as always, this is Rokas, and I'll see you on the virtual Madigan soon.